Our beloved vestibule green bean is up for sale. Hey everybody, Steve Mack here. I'm standing in front of our 2018 vestibule teardrop trailer. That's vestibule for those of you who may not know about it, VI, not vestibule, because what it really is it's a vestibule with a vista. Vista Buell. I didn't make it up, sorry. Anyway, kind of a sad day for us because we're actually gonna sell our trailer. Let me put that a little differently. We're gonna put our trailer up for sale. It's gonna be a little higher than you might expect because we don't need to sell it. We don't even want to sell it, but our lives had taken a, a different direction and it's time to sell it. If we don't sell it, that's okay. There is currently a two year wait once you purchase this trailer to get yours. I think it might be worth it for somebody to get their trailer today or tomorrow. Also, I've got tons of custom modifications in here. You can see a bunch of them on my YouTube channel. I'll show some off here. I figured we'll walk it through the trailer right now. Some of you may not have seen it, so it'll be kind of a tour of the vestibule. And at the same time, we'll point out the features that it has for people that are interested in buying it. By the way, if you're watching this video sometime in the future, let's say, and you're interested in buying this, take a look at the title of the video, and I will put the word sold in there once it's gone. And let me tell you, it's probably gone by now because when these things go up for sale, they tend to go in a matter of hours. So this is a 2018 Vistibule. Vistibule is a small company that manufactures only this trailer in Minnesota. They make only about eight or 12 a month. So it's a boutique company. They're not mass produced. I would say this is one of the highest quality fit and finishes that I've seen on a teardrop trailer. And I've looked at a bunch of them. So I thought I'd give you a tour of the trailer, starting right up front here and working ourselves all the way around the outside. Then we'll go inside the cabin and finally, my favorite part, the galley. So this is a steel frame trailer. It's 14 feet long from the tongue all the way to the back. The dry weight is about 1300 pounds. The tongue weight is about 140 pounds, depending on what we have in there. Uh, this is a Fulton F2 double wheel jack. It's got a locking uh, wheel lock on the bottom there. Makes it very easy to roll with the double wheels. Propane tank is, I don't know what size. I'll put it on the screen for you. This is plumbed all the way to the back. I'll show you that later when we get to the galley. Got a nice big tongue box here, completely waterproof. Provides tons of storage. We tend to put all of our dirty stuff in there, anything that touches the ground. The wheel chocks, tarps, tents, things like that. There's a standard seven pin round electrical connector, which provides all your electrical needs while towing and stores nicely in this little holder over here. It also provides power for your electric brakes. The huge window on the front of the vestibule is what makes this trailer. It's so nice to wake up to that beautiful view 
or to be able to look all the way through to the cars behind you while you're driving. This is a safety window, just like your automobile windshield. Coming around now to the side of the trailer, the two sides are almost identical. I'll point out when they're not, but they both have this vent, which I'll show you when we get inside the cabin. This, of course, is the clip for holding the door open. Taking this part, standard RV stuff. I'm sure there's a more technical name than the clip, but there it is. The side doors have these nice acrylic windows, which have a curtain so you can see out or have some privacy. They have these two, I don't know, pressure dongles that you close while you're traveling. It puts a little bit of extra pressure on the window to keep any uh, road water from getting up, rain coming off the road from getting up into the trailer. This is uh, what I call the eyebrow. It sits over the top of the window, so you can actually have your window open at night or when it's raining, and the rain will hit here and deflect down the window. Take this lever, bring it all the way up to here, bring it down, and now you have the adjustability. These little notches are what catch it. The side porthole windows open just like the other windows, but they've got this beautiful wood cover to go over them at night when you need privacy or in the day when you need a little darkness. Then they have the same metal lever that twists, turns down, and the window will stop at the three different settings. There's also a screen on this window as well. Toward the back, we have aluminum fenders over 14 inch wheels and stylish rims, if I do say so myself. And on the passenger side, we have a 15 amp standard RV electrical hookup for when you get into a campground that has electricity or to keep your batteries charged while you're at home. Above that, we are wired for solar. This is a standard ZAMP controller. You can buy an external solar panel. I think this is the way to go because you can park your trailer in the shade and you can put your panel on a 25 or 50 foot extension cord out in the sun, keep your battery charged all the time. There's two exterior lights for those midnight trips to the, uh, the car or whatever. They're easily accessible from a switch right inside the door there, put off a ton of light. They're amber colored to keep the bugs down. Moving around to the rear of the trailer now, we've got two more pressure dongles here to hold the galley door down while you're driving. This is a standard quarter turn entry to get into the galley, which we'll do later. The galley window is tempered glass, so very strong. And again, this is the window that you can see all the way through when cars are coming up behind you. And let's move around to the other side. The driver's side or street side is exactly the same as the other side, except it has this water station as opposed to the electrical and solar that the other side has. This is a standard RV water system. The locking door, it has both gravity fill, so you can put a funnel in here or, or just press a hose up against it to fill up your tank. And city hookup, so you can undo this side, put a hose up on there, screw it on when you're in a campground that has water supply and you've got continuous water. There's also a little pivoting piece here so when you have your hose hooked up, you can close this and lock it so that nobody else has access to your water supply. And that brings us to the inside of the trailer, also known as the cabin. It's the sleeping quarters and has a lot of cabinets and under bed storage. To transition from bed mode to couch mode, you just lift up on the handle, push back on the bed, and then pop this board into place. To transition back to bed mode, just lift up on the board, slide it forward, and push down on the top of the bed. It's easy to do with one person, even easier with two. Inside here we have a full queen bed, almost 55 inches, 55 wide by 73 deep. We're in bed, no bed mode now, so you have easier access to the cabinets here. These cabinets are custom, custom uh, modified to fold down. So if you have pillows here, or even if you're in bed mode, in bed mode you can open it about that wide. There's tons of storage here, upper storage you can close so you can see through while you're driving, or at night you can have these closed so people can't see in. So you've got one, two, three, and four. Um, these all drop down about another seven inches. This one does not drop down because underneath here is the electrical equipment. On the ceiling is a Max Air fan. It's reversible, 
and it has a thermostat setting. So you can set it to say 75 degrees and you can leave camp in the morning and as soon as it gets hot enough inside the cabin the fan will kick on automatically. It can be controlled manually or with the remote that conveniently stores in the custom remote storage box. It can also be used in the rain. Customized in the pass-through are this Kleenex box which hangs off the ceiling and this remote holder which holds all three remotes for the fan and the two sets of mood lights. This is our phone or tablet holder mounted up on the ceiling. It's flexible, bends down, can turn either direction. Much better than a giant TV that you really don't need in a teardrop. At the front of the trailer, down by your feet, are these two storage bins that are 13 by 15 and 7 inches deep. There's also a 7 inch deep storage down in the footwell that goes all the way back under the bed. There's more storage than you could possibly need. Once you're in couch mode, you can access the center table. Just pull the center pole out, place it in this hole, press the table down on top, and you are all set. You can position the table to any position that's most comfortable for you. I've completely rebuilt this shelf to hold your phone and chargers, your keys, water bottle, even two. Under the shelf, there are these two vents that are perfect for bringing air right across your body and up through the ceiling fan. They open both up and down. I just did that backwards. I don't know why you'd ever want to open them so that water can get in the top, but they do. There are two of these gooseneck lights, one on each side. They're perfect for task lighting at this end of the bed. I've customized this 12 volt charger to have two ports available on each side of the bed. This large window in the front is perfect if you want to sleep with your head at that end and gaze straight up at the stars or put your head at the other end and you can see out over your view. These are the porthole windows that you saw from the outside. To open them you turn these two clips 90 degrees, remove the wooden cover and it stores conveniently right down here in this holder. This strap holds the door in place, keeps it from slamming open on windy conditions and it mounts on the screw on the inside here, can mount it here or here. On the door, we have a table that folds up just like that. That table can be used inside or outside. The curtains on the door are Velcro and come down just like that. We also have these thermal curtains, which practically pop into place, fit right underneath the existing curtains, and they have a they have a layer of Thinsulate inside that will block heat from coming in or hold heat on the inside. They're a solid color on one side and a decorative color on the other. You can put them either direction. They also block out a ton of light. We've used them down to 20 degrees with nothing but a few hot water bottles and we're perfectly comfortable. On the inside of the door, the handle is lockable from the inside for added security. On the inside of the door, there's also these two quarter turns, one at the top and one down at the bottom that give you a little extra pressure while you're traveling to keep water from coming up off your tires and driving in underneath the door. The interior has these great mood lights. You can set them to 16 different colors. You can put them in all kinds of different modes so that they blink, change colors, what we call disco mode. And you know, we thought, well, should we get those? It'll be fun, what the heck. We use them all the time. As a matter of fact, you can put the white light on and they provide pretty much all the light you need in here at night. The white lights can be set to 25%, 50%, 75%, or 100. We've come to my favorite part of the trailer to show off the galley. This is the part that attracts all the looky-loos in the campground. And that's because you do all your food prep back here. You've got your full kitchen. You've got your storage for your food, your pots and pans. The sink is... Let's just get into details. The sink is 10 inches by 12 inches and about four and a half deep. It's cold water, standard nozzle, and a pull-out sprayer, great for scrubbing your dishes. It comes way out and it has a ton of pressure. Perfect for washing your feet outside, washing your dog, even having a water fight while you're in campground. There's a nine gallon freshwater tank and a nine gallon gray water. This upper left cabinet above the sink has a nice flat tray here 
and an upper compartment here that's a little bit deeper. This is a custom modification by me, the spice rack, but it also will hold a standard shot glass if you wish, or I have these handy little spray bottles with some soaps and cleaners in them. That works great too. Just underneath is the paper towel holder right there. This is a little box that we used to hold our cables and little things like that. Uh, that's a custom thing that you're going to get for free because I put it in there and it's wedged in so tight, it's not coming back out. This is the pass-through. It's ridiculously convenient, as I mentioned before, for seeing that car that's pulling up behind you, but also for passing things through, thus the name. A book, a toothbrush, a water bottle, a snack, a coffee, tissue, wet wipes. How much time do you have? Back here in the pass-through, this is your main power. It's got a little red indicator light there that you probably can't see. This is 110 power, perfect for plugging in your laptop charger, uh, electric coffee pot. This only works when you are hooked up to shore power. This is a standard 12 volt outlet there. And this last one is the switch for the water pump. It has also an indicator light to let you know that it's turned on. Here's one of my favorite customizations. This three glass wine holder really classes up the joint. And yes, they are real glass. This right cabinet has not only that custom spice rack, but opens up here and has full silverware compartment as well as cork aligned so that your silverware doesn't damage the bottom. This is a custom mirror. You'll only see that on one other trailer that I know of. The four circle cutouts in the back here are perfect for four wine bottles or we roll up extra towels and store them in there just like that. Here's a little hint. If you have a teardrop trailer, a rolled up towel is perfect padding for anything that's gonna move or vibrate while you're driving. Also custom on this trailer only. This trailer's got a lot of custom stuff. Two towel holders, oh. One on each side. These are what we call the bat wings. Some people call them the Burt wings after the creator of the vestibule, Burt Taylor. They pull down just like that. Snap into place here. Pull the bungee at the bottom. And just like that, you've got your bat wings all set up to protect you from the sun, the wind, and even windblown rain. But just like every part of this trailer, they will attract people into your campsite asking for a tour. Have we talked about the second set of mood lights on the galley lid? Just like the ones inside, these can be set to a multitude of colors and of course, you can put them in disco mode. There's six drawers down below. Three that came with the vestibule and this is custom. You won't find it in any other vestibule. Another set of three drawers. By the way, this bottom drawer, completely custom. We find that we have lots of round things that we carry when we camp. Those little Coleman gas bottles our coffee maker, our lantern, uh, roll of trash bags. Those fit nicely in here and they won't bounce around and get all over the place. I like to have those gas tanks nice and safe. Perfect. On this side, you've got a nice breadboard to pull out to give you a little extra room. But here's another custom thing that no other trailer has. I should say no other vestibule trailer. This goes in here in place of the breadboard. And this is our extension table. This is fully adjustable. Turn these handles and move this piece up and down. You put this underneath here, drops into the slot. And now you've got this long extended table. Why does it have a hole in the middle? I'll show you. Back in here, we get our cutting board and that slides into that hole to give you a nice chopping block there. Plus when you need, you can still have access to this top drawer to get to whatever you've got stored in there. This extension gives you a full 45 inches, which is gold in a teardrop trailer. This direction, 13 and a half. We have two doors on this bottom because we like to have quick access to our drawers. But we do have the other two doors so this whole thing can be covered. On this side, We've got a nice spot to hold your cutting board. Down here, I've added a shelf, another thing that you won't see in any other vestibule. 
and we have a spot to put a, a standard Coleman two burner stove. It has these holes right here for the feet, so it slides right, right in and stays put. Nothing stays put in a teardrop trailer. Not only do we have the two burner Coleman stove, which we use most often, but the trailer is also plumbed with propane that goes all the way from the front to the back here. And you can hook up an external propane hose to this, bring it out here and use a large Camp Chef stove, something like that. It's gonna come with a fire extinguisher down here underneath the sink. There is a board to protect all your plumbing so when you're sliding pots and pans or whatever inside here, you won't damage your plumbing. And this is magnetically connected so it just slides into place and clicks right in. There's a second one down here behind the stove. By the way, we'll be including this cover. Packs into this nice handy carrying case and once it's unpacked and put on, it's waterproof, pretty windproof, dustproof, keeps the dust off your trailer anyway, and it's got some great functionality. And you can get in the side door in a pinch. Only on one side. Also has the same thing for the galley door. Our vestibule trailer has been very good to us. We've taken it on a lot of trips and it's so convenient. We like to keep it all packed with clothes and everything ready to go. All we do is back the car up, hook the trailer hitch, and drive out of town. We bring an empty ice chest, stop at a store, fill the ice chest, and grab some food, and we're good to go. In fact, a lot of people buy them as bug out trailers. If you need to jump in and get out of town quick, this is the way to go. So these bloopers, do you like them? Let me know in the comments, because they do take a little bit of work, and if people don't like them, I won't spend a lot of time on them. Also, click like, click subscribe, click the bell, you know, because there's new videos every single day. I mean, not my videos, but everybody else's videos push my videos down, way down underneath the giant pile. So you gotta have that bell clicked if you wanna know when I put a new one up. Whew, it's windy out there. You know, teardrops aren't for everyone. I mean, you're still camping. This is like a big fancy tent with hard sides, and electricity, and uh, running water, <laughs> stove in the back, tons of storage, huge windows. Maybe it is for everybody. So that's the full tour of the Vistabule Teardrop trailer and all its accoutrements and modifications. Trailer is for sale. So look in the description on my YouTube channel. If you're watching this somewhere else, you gotta go to YouTube. The very top of the, of the description below will be my email address if you have questions or you need pricing information. If my email address is not there, the trailer's sold. Anyway, I'm Steve Mack. See you next time. We tend to put all our dirty stuff in there, anything that touches the ground. Tarps. What was I gonna say? I don't know what I was gonna say. On the rear of the trailer now, I'm gonna wait for this car to go by. I'll do this again, because there's another freaking car. Car. Waiting for a car uh, again. Never film on a Sunday. To keep that road water from coming up through the door. Road water? Is there a better term than road water? And yes, they are real glass. <laughs> okay, waiting for the wine glasses to stop tinkling in the back. I've also completely rebuilt this shelf to hold your phone. Your keys, a water bottle, or two. Do that again. To hold your phone, a water bottle, or two. <laughs> I did it the first time. I've completely rebuilt this shelf. Yeah. I've completely rebuilt. <clears throat> hold your phone, your keys, a full. I didn't say it again. I've completely re <clears throat> completely rebuilt <clears throat> to hold your phone. Here, keys are second. To hold your phone and chargers, and your keys, a water bottle, even two. I'm never gonna get this. Two of them.
too much to get right, that's why. Come on, Steve, get it right, get it right. To hold your phone. Ah, keys are seconds. Come on, Steve. Take 47. Your keys, your water bottle. Oh my God, how many did I just do that I wasn't recording? <laughs> Sometimes you have to laugh so you don't cry. That's take 247. Let's try again tomorrow. Woosa. I don't even know what I want to say here. I'm so sad. If you need to get out of town quickly, it's the way to go. Say you have flooding or... Uh... <laughs> Start to say home invasion? <laughs> what neighborhood do I live in? Dang, is that the COVID-19 right there? It's more like a COVID-25, but... All right.